So this is uh, the Earth Gospel by Sam Hamilton Poor. Today we're going to do a morning prayer from Tuesday of week one. And, uh, you know, please consider getting a copy of the book if you don't have one already. So after a moment of quiet, I'll begin with a section from Psalm 36. Lord, your love reaches to heaven, your fidelity to the clouds. Your justice is like the highest mountains, your judgments like the mighty deep. All living creatures you sustain, O Lord. How precious is your love, O God. Mute yourself, I guess. Our scripture reading is Psalm 145, verses 8 and 9. You are kind, you are kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in love. How good you are, Lord, to all compassion and all compassionate to all your creatures. You are faithful in all your words and loving in all your deeds. You support all those who are failing and raise up all those who are bowed down. The eyes of all creatures look to you and you give them their food in due time. You open wide your hand, grant the desires of all who live. And another voice, Ruth Page. I love this one. What then would God know and care about, say, a cheetah? Presumably, God would know the whole evolutionary history of cheetahs and the history of this particular cheetah, the cheetah's physical components of particles and molecules, its biological nature as a carnivore and its relation to other big cats, the ecological niche it occupies in the local system, its success or failure in finding food supply, in mating, and in its rearing of cubs, at least if it is a female cheetah. Such knowledge would concern both cheetahs generally and the specific happenings of this particular cheetah's life. 
God knows how the world looks and smells to a cheetah. Equally, the divine presence will see the grace and power of the cheetah at full stretch and pray. We'll know its frustration at failure and its satisfaction at a successful kill, which it can keep from hyenas and other predators. But God will also know the antelope's experience of the cheetah as predator, the local human being's view of it, the white hunter's view of it as quarry, with all the hinterland of beliefs and practices which that implies. From that instance of the cheetah, one must extrapolate to all creatures, great and small, wild and tame, past, present, and future. Yet God's love, like God's presence, is not made thin and general by being offered to all. The divine presence and love is constant and does not admit of degrees. So they are concentrated on each individual at each time and are as total for non-human beings as for human beings. Take uh, two minutes to reflect in silence on these two readings. We move towards prayer. We remember all those who've asked for our prayers and for those who need them because of illness or other kinds of adversity. We pray especially for peace throughout the world, wherever there's fighting, and especially in Ukraine, and pray for peace talks going on today in Turkey. Please, God, we ask for a path to peace. Go ahead, Beth. Let us be aware of the source of being, that it is common to us all and to all living creatures. Let us be filled with the presence of the great compassion toward ourselves and towards all living beings. Realizing that we are all nourished from the same source of life, May we so live that others be not deprived of air, food, water, shelter, or the chance to live. Amen. Thank you. And a blessing for today. The God who creates the cheetah and provides for its needs the spirit who breathes life into us and animates our living, the word who is recreating all life each moment, each day, guide you, feed you, protect and inspire you this day. <laughs>